How do we implement a mutable environment? Well, one way is by starting uh, and implementing frames. So let's do that. Let's see what a frame, how can we represent a frame? Uh, and this, as we know, um, a heap contains a heap of record. So when you're executing record, uh, the memory is laid out as follows. You have um, your keys in your heap are going to be frames. So each of these brackets, and this is what we're trying to implement. So each frame has a hash table with key values and possibly a reference to a parent. So this frame connects to E0 and this frame uh, connects to no one. So let's say um, we know that there is for sure at least two things that we need to store in a frame. Uh, one would be this hash table that contains a and the other one is possibly the parent. Okay, so what can we do? Let's just say that we want to define a struct uh, and we'll call this struct frame. Okay, and then we want a parent and we want the vars, uh, which are the variable bindings. Uh, we want to make this transparent. Okay, and what do we need now? So we have these two things. First, we have a reference to parent, which is here. And second, we have a map of local bindings, called it vars. Okay, so how do I represent frames? We could have an empty frame. So let's define empty frame. So what is an empty frame? It's a frame that has no parent. And let's use no parent to be false. And you'll see why in a moment. Um, but just rest assured that in Racket, the convention is that false is like null. Everything that is not false is uh, true, as you know, and it's kind of a convention to use it as a default value when you don't know what you should use. So you have false means no parent, uh, and then uh, empty hash table, because this means empty. Okay. So a way to define empty frame would just be this. Let's print it. Okay, and we got our hash back. So, so far, so good. An empty frame. Okay, so let's say we want to write um, this example, but instead of closure, let's just write 10. So how would we do that? Let me write, put the code here. Uh, I would write define E0 to be not E0 because E0 is the handle, right? So let's say E0 frame. So the frame of E0, what would that be? It would be a frame that has no parent. Right? And then I have a hash table. What are my keys? They are uh, D variables, right? Because now I'm on language D. Uh, oh, I need to import require HW5 U2. Um, okay, so I have a variable A and I have a D variable, uh, D number 20. And I also have uh, D variable V. And instead of the closure, let's just store a number because it's easier. 10. Okay, so now I can print E0. Okay, and let's see. D is bound to 10 and A is bound to 20. Okay, so now what are the interesting operations we might want? Well, we certainly want to be able to get and put things in that frame, right? Because we, we know that in our implementation, in the, in the implementation of EFF, we're going to need, sorry, of e, Lambda D, language Lambda D, which we are implementing. We saw in the formalism that we need to somehow update uh, an existing environment, which means 
we need to update a frame, right? Because environments contain are composed by frames or composed of frames. So what is E0? Um, we need to somehow, uh, let's say we want to define a function that uh, I now want to add another binding where I can set C to be 40. Okay, so I should call this uh, define, um, sorry, I'm going to call frame. I want to put, okay, because I want to put another variable. And I want to put the variable, the variable C, and I want to put the number, let's say 30. Okay. Of course, this doesn't work, right, because it's not defined. Um, so now let's define it. Define frame put. Okay, so frame put takes what? A frame. Uh, and then it takes what? A variable and a value. Okay. Uh, what do we do with it? As we know, this is an immutable language, so we create a new frame back. So we have to do frame. Uh, what is the parent? The parent has to be the same parent as in frame, right? Because we're not changing the parent. So let's do frame parent. Let's pass frame. And now what do we do? Hmm. We want to update the hash table that is contained in the frame, right? So let's get the old frame. Old uh, vars. So let's do define old vars. What are old vars? The old vars are frame vars of frame, right? So this line is getting me the old variable. So it would get me this whole, oops, sorry. I, this whole hash, right? That's what is stored in old vars. Um, now what I want to do, I want to create a new, define new vars. Okay, so what do I want to do there? My variables are hash tables. So I want to do hash, uh, and then I do put. And I want to put var and val. Okay. Uh, so now I have my new vars. Um, and this should work. Let's see. So now we call it. And it's saying that it's not hash put, it's hash something, hash uh, set. Ha, huh, okay. Hash set, hash set, hash set. Okay, am I not passing? Oh, I forgot to pass the old, old vars, right? So I have to. Hash set takes the first parameter is the old variables, second parameter is the variable that we're the key and the value. Okay, and this will return a new hash table. Um, okay, so this is interesting, uh, but maybe we want to make this a bit smarter because now I can do frame put uh, e0, uh, and let's say I do a mistake. And I actually store, um, so let me store, let me. One thing I could do is maybe you want to make frame put a bit more robust. Um, and instead of, we want to disallow somehow because you guys might be using frame put. And let's say by mistake, you flipped variable with value. So you did uh, D number 30 uh, and then D variable C, okay, which is not what you want. Um, so in this case, Racket is very happy and just returns, um, where is it? Here it is. Now the key number 30 is assigned to variable C when it should be the other way around. But we've learned that we could, we could um, write more defensive code if we write contracts. So one way, thing we can do is uh, contract. Okay, so let's let, write our contract. The first thing we do is we put the arrow and we write the signature of 
of this function. So what is it? We take a frame, right? And frame question mark is created when we define the struct frame, as we know. <coughs> the second argument is going to be a variable. So we can do d variable. And the third is going to be a value. What is the fourth? What are we returning? So these are the input parameters. The output parameter is going to be a frame, right? Because that's what we're returning. So let's do this. Okay. Let's see if that works. Okay, so now we're saying that we are expecting a number um, on line 14, right? So it's not very obvious where the error is happening, um, which is a nuisance, right? We might, we can improve the debugging information by adding error trace which is why in your homework you have that so if i do that now now i have a bit more information i have where the error is actually occurring rather than where it was defined so now i see that the problem here is on line error trace which was missing before now it's visible because I added uh, this error trace um, here. So because I've added error trace here, I get this, uh, the error trace to show up. And in the error trace, I can clearly see that uh, in line 22, I passed the number and then the variable. But here, what I'm saying is that I'm expecting a variable and I got a number. So this is incorrect. I get a very clear error message rather than before, which I was just breaking. So now let's see if the old code works. Okay, so this code works as expected. Okay, so <clears throat> in your homework, you don't actually have to write contracts, but if you have to write some intermediate function, you might want to add contracts because it adds uh, an, you know, an, a net of security around your code. <clears throat> you know exactly why things are failing. So here we are. We've defined put. The next thing we might want to do is, um, oh, one thing you might be wondering is, well, but this is um, overriding variables. So if I have, uh, so first thing that is annoying is that we would like to know what are the values of my variables, right? Currently, I'm just printing out the whole frame, but um, technically, when I look up in an environment, if a variable is defined, I need to ask the frame to get me that value of that variable. So we need to define uh, frame get as well, right? We did define, we did frame put, so we also need frame get. So let's do that frame. Uh, what we take, we take a variable. Let's go ahead and go ahead and, and just write the contract. So what we want, we want something that takes a frame, and then it takes a variable. What does it return? Hmm. A value, right? Okay. Okay, so how, how does that work? Well, we need to, we have a hash table inside this frame, and what we want to do is we want to look up the value inside the, the hash table. So first thing we need to do is we need to get the, the hash table from it. So let's do vars is a frame vars of frame. So here we get the hash table, and then what we need to return, we do hash ref of vars and we pass uh, the variable var that we want and this is basically going to be our return value um, and now as we know in our frame e0 we have variable a is assigned to number 20 so let's see if that still works so we do um, frame get uh, frame e zero frame 
and we get the variable a. And we get the number 20, and if we do, do b, we get number 10. 10. Uh, and finally, we could even go ahead and write um, some variable that we don't know of, let's say uh, z. And now we get a contract error. Why? Because my contract says I have to return a value. But what I got was, let's see, no value. We got an error. So we just get a, an exception is raised when, when we use ref and it's not defined. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, in the case of our, um, if of homework five, it just means if you ever see this hash ref, no value for key, uh, that means that somehow you implemented something wrong that allowed you to do to look up a variable in the wrong place. Um, so that you would get this kind of error, like hash ref. Okay. So that's basically it. Those are the two operations that we want. We want uh, get and put. Let me go back to the slides and make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Um, okay. Oh, okay. So here what we're saying is that we would actually like to get false. How did I do this? Frame get. Ah, we need to define a default value. Okay. So actually in the code, we don't want this exception to happen. We want, um, I didn't remember how I implemented this. We actually want to return false uh, when the value is not there rather than just throwing an exception because it's easier to handle that way rather than doing a try catch in, in, in racket, which I haven't taught and it's um, not something that is going to be taught here. At least not for now. We'll, that's when we cover exceptions. Okay, so how do we do that? We can get, get, give a default value which is false and then what we, ha what we do when we call um, function uh, now we get another error, and we're saying that we broke our own contract, which is surprising. Um, but if you think about it, it kind of makes sense, right? Because false is not a value, but we're saying that the return value should be a value. So this is annoying. What can we do? What we want to say is that we want it's either a value or false, right? So how do we do that? Let's see. We write this or C contract. Okay, so what is or C? Or C is basically... It's either this or false. So you have a very precise way. So the contracts um, is actually just running code. So I can be very expressive and I can even say, I want the return value to be either a value or this thing. And in this case, this specific thing is going to be false, hash, hash f. Um, so this is how we would write the contract that works and now everything should be fine we finally did a get that makes um, that does what it's supposed to do according to what I've implemented in homework 5 so now let's go back to this the examples I just gave you a few more you can try it on your own um, Ah, and one thing that is very important um, that I didn't talk about is what would uh, frame push would be. So let's try to implement frame push that I haven't implemented here. Yeah, let's do next. Okay. <clears throat> so what is frame push? We did frame get, we did frame put. The next thing we need to do is or need to think about is when we do a frame put, an environment put, what we're doing is we want to create uh, a, new, a new environment, right? So what that implicitly is saying is that we want to create a new frame. We want to have a new box in that tree. Uh, let me go back to the tree. Um, so whenever we call a function, we need to allocate a new environment for, for the body, for the code that is running in the body of the function, right? Um, to do so, we basically need to create a new box here Okay, so this box is going to connect to whichever environment is in the closure, right? It's going to be, let's say, 
you call the function, uh, you create a disenvironment, and its parent must be the parent that was before. Right? It needs to connect. So in, in terms of the frame, we need to somehow represent this thing where we say, I want to allocate a new frame that takes the, the, the reference to the parent, um, and I want to push a new binding. So I want to say that I want to assign x to 10, because that's how we wrote it in the formalism, right? if you recall. So how do we do this? We want to define um, frame push. And what does frame push do? Frame push is creating a whole new environment, so we don't really care about... Um, we want to know what is the parent frame, basically. If we have the parent frame, we have a way of addressing the parent. Uh, and then what we want to know is, so we need the parent, that's for sure. Next, next, next thing we need to do is we need to get the um, key. The key. Okay, we need to somehow my my lap my laptop's keyboard stopped working, so I had to pause. Sorry about that. Okay, so if I want to push, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, basically, a push is uh, reflected to a frame. What I need to know is who is the parent, because basically I'm creating a new... Let's look at the visualization. Uh, where is it? Yeah. So if I want to do a push the first time, I would just have something like this, right? So what I need to know is how do I allocate this data structure Okay, to know how to allocate this data structure, which is just highlighted in blue, I need three parameters. I need to know who is my parent, who is my key, and who is my value. Those are the three parameters. So let's do that. We have a key, and we have a value. It's going to be define. Um, and what this should return is, okay, it's very easy. We return a frame that has a parent, um, and then it has a hash with a key and a value. So it's just a simplified way of, instead of allocating the structure, you just do this and it internally shorthand notation to just write that. So if I wanted to create a new frame, um, and let's say that my frame is frame push, let's say it's the first frame of all, I could just do frame push, my parent is no one, and I wanna do, uh, let's say a key, which is uh, the variable C and the number 30. Let's see how that works. Okay, so I'm, I've initialized that. So I can additionally uh, define a frame, um, a contract if I want. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. The last thing I wanted to show, let me go back, is what? Uh, parse frame, which is very useful. So parse frame is what we use internally to print out um, for the tests. So we don't want to write frames. Imagine if you want to write a closure. So as before, we also have a, a way to parse. Um, easier notation. Ignore this. How do we do that? We call it frame parse. Actually, I need to write this before because now that's a different struct. So I need to write this here. Okay, so let's see what parse, parse frame does. It still works. Okay, you can see that the parse frame, imagine creating this all by hand, you would have to do a hash with a variable and then a closure inside it has a handle and so on. So if you just create this, exactly what I wrote in the slides, it will parse a frame for you. Um, and it already handles uh, parent and everything. So if I wanna rate, I wanna say that the parent of this is also E0, I can do that. And now you will note that here I see handle zero. If I do handle 10, uh, I will see the parent to be the handle 10. So the prefix E is still used everywhere. 
um, and that represents a handle. So this is a shorthand. Basically, what you saw in the in the frames is what you get. You can uh, just directly parse it, and you would get the expression that you want. And that's basically it. Thank you.